Let's take a look at uh, bias and sampling. Now bias is where the results of the sample are not representative of the population. Now there's three sources of bias and sampling. There's sampling bias, uh, non-response bias, and response bias. Sampling bias means a technique used to obtain a sample, samples individuals, tends to favor one part of the population over another. It can also occur from under coverage, which uh, occurs when the uh, proportion of one segment of the population is lower in a sample than it is in the, uh, than it is in the population. Non-response bias exists when individuals selected to be in a sample who do, do not respond to the survey have different opinions from those who do. Um, ways to avoid this is callbacks and rewards. Um, this is hard to this is hard to get. Um, it's hard to get people to respond. Um, sometimes businesses take advantage of that. Uh, there's a uh, electronic store that offers um, these rebates. You just have to mail them in. And uh, I hate going to the store. It drives me nuts. Um, because they'll offer like a hundred dollar mail-in rebate. Well, you know how it goes. You take get home. And they don't make it that easy. You have to take, like get a photocopy of the, the barcode or whatever, and mail it in. Well, you set up on the, on the shelf, and you think, well, I'll get to that next week. Well, next week comes. You think, uh, ah, next week. Uh, and then next week comes uh, a little bit more, you know. And then eventually, you decide, okay, I'm going to mail that in, and get my hundred dollars. It expired two days ago. Uh, always happens. They count on a majority of people being that way. Um, that's why they give those mail-in rebates. They know the majority of people won't send them in. They could give you their money right there in a store, but again, their their goal is not to not to give you that money. So it's hard to get people to respond. And then sometimes you have response bias. Exists when the answers on a survey do not reflect the true feelings of the respondent. Uh, ways this happen. Interview error, misrepresented answers, wording of the questions, ordering of questions or words, type of question, open or close, and data entry error. Now, non-sampling errors um, result from undercoverage, non-response bias, response bias, or data entry error. Sampling errors uh, results from using using a sample to estimate information about a population. Now, well, let's uh, take a look at these. Determine type of bias and suggest a rem remedy. In uh, 1936, the American Literary Digest magazine collected over two million postal surveys and predicted that the Republican candidate in the U.S. presidential election, Alf London, would beat the incumbent president, Frank Franklin Roosevelt, by a large margin. The result was the ex exact opposite. The Literary Digest survey represented a sample collected from readers of the magazine, supplemented by records of registered auto owners and telephone users. The sample included overrepresentation of individuals who were rich, who as a group were more likely to vote for a Republican candidate. That right there tells you what they did wrong. Sampling bias means the technique used to obtain uh, tends to favor one part of the population over another. Um, well, theirs tended to favor their own own people who um, or own um, subscribers. I mean, uh, who subscribe to that and also uh, what was the other one? Supplemented by records of registered auto owners and telephone users. Well, I pulled this from Wikipedia. Um, you know, the definitely their own their own um, subscribers were Republicans, um, and not everybody had auto autos back then and telephones. Uh, more of the well well to do did, uh, so it didn't really represent it. So that's a bias. Second one, an email sent out randomly to 300 managers, managers asking them how many hours they're working per week. The results the results ind indicate that the average work week for managers is 40. Yeah, this doesn't say anything about that maybe they didn't send it to the right people. Non-response bias exists when the individual selected to be in the sample who do not respond to the survey have different opinions from those who do. That's a non-response bias, that particular one. And the reason why, an email is sent out randomly 300 managers asking them how many hours they're working per week. Your real hard-working managers may be working 60, 70 hours a week. They don't have time to respond back to an email. Your um, manager who's bored, he's sitting there with nothing to do, he'll respond back to the email. Um, so the results indicate the average work week for managers is 40. Well, um, that's because those who don't have much to do are responding. So again, it's not a very good, um, good sample. 
Um, let me grab a drink here. This is a famous one. In 1948 presidential election, on election night, the Chicago Tribune printed the headline, Dewey Defeats Truman, which turned out to be mistaken. In the morning, the grinning president-elect Harry S. Truman was photographed holding a newspaper bearing this headline. The reason the Tribune was mistaken is that their editor trusted the results of a phone survey. Survey research was then in its infancy, and few academics realized that a sample of telephone users was not representative of the general population. Telephones were not yet widespread, and those who had them tend to be prosperous and have stable addresses. Well, that's again our um, sampling bias. And here's a picture of that. That's a famous uh, statistics blunder. Uh, Dewey defeats Truman. And that's Truman holding that up, happy as can be the next day. <laughs> um, now here a pollster heads to a particular corner of our city and selects 20 houses to find out income levels. Um, we got our sampling bias, which we've, we've talked about. Um, we also got our non-response bias, where they don't get back to you, and those who don't get back to you have a different opinion. And we got a response bias. Um, well, this would be the sampling bias again. Pollster has a particular corner of Arc City and selects 20 houses to find out income levels. Well, in a particular corner, they all tend to have the same income level. So it really doesn't tell you very much about, um, about the income levels of uh, the entire town. On this one, an instructor decides to use his class as a sample and asks them how many hours they, they study. How many hours they study? Response bias. Exists when the answers of a survey do not reflect the true feelings of the respondent. Think about an uh, uh, instructor asking you that. How many hours they study? Well, if they tell you they don't study hardly at all, what's the instructor going to do? Maybe make the class tougher? Give you more work? So students will lie. Um, maybe you just want an uh, instructor to think well of you, so you don't want them to think that you've been, um, you know, letting their class go by the wayside, so you'll mis misrepresent uh, the truth. Maybe not lie. Okay, a doctor survey asked new patients how many hours they exercise per week. Um, try to get back up there. Response bias. Exists when answers and survey do not reflect true feelings of the respondent. I actually got to ask this answer, or got, <laughs> I got to ask this question when I went to see the doctor one time, went, to, went with my wife, went to see an endocrinologist, and the on there is asked, how many hours do you exercise per week? And I put zero down there. <laughs> and my wife's watching over my shoulders, I'm filling this out. And she said, what'd you do that for? And, uh, and I said, well, what do you mean? And so you put zero down. I said, well, I don't exercise. Um, it is zero. And she said, you told him zero? You should have should have made something up. She thought I should put one down or two. It's like, why lie? Um, it's going to be obvious when they see me. <laughs> okay. Instructor received the following survey through email. Um, Pearson is committed to providing you with the most comprehensive and effective textbooks for the computer-aided drawing courses that you teach. To that end, we are trying to determine courses offered in your program and challenges and trends that you feel are affecting your course courses going forward. Could you please spare a few minutes now and complete our short online questionnaire and uh, return? Your name will be entered in the drawing to win one of three $50 Amazon e-gift certificates. The survey is posted at. This is one I actually received. I just added copied it. And this will suffer from non-response. Um, you know, if uh, a particular electronic store can't get you to mail in, uh, take five minutes to mail in something to get $100 back, then people typically aren't going to do this unless they're bored. A uh, survey is given to 30 students at random to inquire how many times they've been arrested. Well, this is our response bias. Um, they can really tell you the truth. You know, if you ask a student, oh, yeah, I've been arrested three times. <laughs> no, they'll they'll lie. Now, I have had students that will tell me the truth on this. Um, uh, and you hear other instructors the same way. Well, they'll, they'll talk about uh, how they're going to be gone for next week because they're going to be in jail. Or <laughs> it's just like, ooh, too much honesty. I don't need that much information. Um, but... Anyway, those are um, example problems of the different types. So let me go ahead and stop the recorder here.